So you might be surprised about the video title, but yes, lo and behold, we actually have an update from the mad lad Wally talking about Cube World. Shoutouts to my buddy D who actually mentioned this post, but yeah, there's basically a new blog post where he kind of highlights what he's been working on with the game. And I thought that it would cool, uh, be cool as a video for us to cover it just because I've covered Cube World many times in the past. We've been playing Trove on the channel for many, many years. And more recently, we've been playing Velerin, which is without adding without being insulting it's basically a copy and paste of cube world like it's clearly more than just inspired by it right but the history of cube world is very muddy because the developer seems to be overly sensitive despite the fact that he is in a public medium uh, he refuses to hire other people to help him with his projects and so he takes on these huge undertakings himself and seems to release updates every few years that then end up getting hit with a bunch of back backlash or feedback and then he kind of regresses back into his hole and then just makes the same mistake but at the very least this does seem interesting so he's basically got a post talking about cube world omega so hi everybody i'm currently working on a version of cube world i chose the project title cube world omega as a reference to cube world alpha because i'd like to develop it in the spirit of that version but with a new engine and new features so uh, in a sense he's stripping back the uh I don't want to say garbage Steam version of the game, but the Steam version basically lacked progression and lacked a lot of the things that we loved about the alpha version that we, in all honesty, as players of Cube World, just wanted to see the game expand more on top of the alpha version in that direction. But then he kind of overhauled the game. So anyways, we've got some new soundtracks, which I'm not going to end up putting in the background. Uh, most of all, this little video right here is him showing the procedural animation of the characters. Um, basically, they're having a mode, so you can see that the trees are fluttering, the flowers are moving and stuff like that, and it, you know, it seems cool. Uh, basically, he's made the game in a completely new graphics engine on Vulcan, which means that performance should be a lot better for those that actually lacked performance on Cube World. Honestly, it wasn't that tanky of a PC game. Uh, but again, this is kind of my argument where he seems to have taken on way too much work and has basically put the game into a new graphics engine rather than working on the fundamental gameplay issues. But you know, I'm not a game dev, I'm just the person playing it. So he added some ambient things like moving clouds, jiggling trees and leaves, water waves as well as weather effects such as rain and snow. Also water is colder, uh, it, water in colder areas can now be frozen with a slippery ice surface. There's also procedural model generation. So you can kind of see all these pictures here. The biggest change I'm working on is procedural models. All creatures in the world, including players, NPCs, pets are now procedurally generated so that basically each creature is unique. No part of a character is hand and modeled neither hair face nor hands everything is generated by an algorithm which i mean you can see they all still basically look the exact same it's just that he ended up putting the uh parameters for character creation into a random generated property which should end up lighting his uh lightening his workload a little bit this also allows me to easily add facial animations to each model here are some examples which the video kind of showed that as well i think that the uh animations of the characters does does add a lot to it also, items such as weapons and armor will be procedurally generated as well. That is really interesting because if you know, Cube World actually had one of the best weapon customization systems that I've ever seen in a voxel game to date, where you would essentially end up getting a pixel or a voxel uh, out in the environment, like a little 3D cube that you could attach to your weapon and it would end up giving it uh, a, a, some additional properties of damage, right? But the thing is that you could essentially use this system not only to buff your weapon, but to completely customize it, whether you would take like a basic blade and then add spikes to it or something, you know? And so if that is a system that is going to just be randomly on weapons that you find in the environment, then that could be nutty. There's also a new GUI, he says. I don't notice a difference it looks the same as it always looked but i mean maybe i'm crazy maybe the fact that it shows the character or something the new uh, gui gets an overhaul here's a look at it and i'm also planning to bring back experience leveling and skill trees for this version of the game uh, and then he mentions some music and that's basically going to end up being it so we'll see whether or not we end up actually 
seeing the fruits of his labors and this update actually coming to full fruition. But generally speaking, I would err on the side of caution. I don't mean to sound so critical towards Wally and Cube World's development as a whole. It's just that my business side of my business sense thinks that he's making a big mistake and just doing the same mistake that a lot of uh, a lot of guys do with projects, uh, passion projects like this, where they almost want to come out guns blazing and have it be perfect, not realizing that the first step is to just put it out there because it's never going to end up being perfect. It's not going to be a good project uh, right away, especially when you're so inexperienced with game development. You have to grow that trust with your audience over time. And that's where you know, there are still people that cling on, hopefully that Cube World is going to continue development and become a fantastic, wonderful game. But as far as I'm concerned, I'm looking forward to this, yes. But I think that Cube World has lost its edge. You know, there's already been so many other games that have kind of copied what Cube World uh, set out to do. Uh, Velerin uh, is, you know, a prime example where these guys basically have the core concept of what Cube World was, but it's already an MMO and has their own custom servers and all that stuff versus, you know, Wally's still screwing around with the game engine, right? And again, I don't mean to sound so critical towards him as a person and game developer. It's just that when a game has been in development hell by a single developer who could very easily tack on other people to the project to make it go more smoothly or, you know, just not go completely dark on the project, then maybe it would have a little bit more trust from me. Because as far as I'm concerned, you know, I've been burnt by early access games uh, in the past and in a lot of ways feel disappointed that Cube World could have reached its potential if only he hadn't abandoned, uh, abandoned the project for many years and then just had a random resurgence. Either way, it's still cool and it's still something worth discussing. You guys can sound off in the comment. Are you, uh, you know, are you 100% supportive of Wally? Do you think he's crazy? Do you think I'm crazy? All of that stuff and more, I'm very welcome to receiving in the comments because unlike Wally, I can handle criticism. And uh, well, hopefully we'll end up seeing the new Cube World update uh, arise from the ashes sometime within the next century so that we can actually play it and uh, possibly have a good time. I mean, it really depends too because the fact that he's saying that this is an Omega Cube World project means that it sounds to me like he's abandoned the Steam version of Cube World and is just working on a completely separate version. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but he could be a little bit more clear. At the end of the day, this is still a single developer, and as much as I give him all of this slack, at the very least, we're still hearing more from Cube World than we are from Hytale. <laughs> but honestly, when Hytale finally comes out, and it will come out because they have a big branching CEO company, you know, Riot Games behind Hytale telling them, you have to do this, you have to release the product, right? Then that game's gonna come out and that's gonna compete with Minecraft. Cube World had its chance, you know, it could have competed with Minecraft and in a lot of ways captured the audience uh, in the lacking features of Minecraft, namely the adventuring and stuff, because Minecraft is more so about building and whatever, but any anyways, now I'm just rambling about my own personal opinions about all these things. I just, I, I wish the best for Wally and Cube World's development. I hope that it goes smoothly and I hope that he doesn't end up releasing another broken mess that is going to end up being hit with backlash for him to go into hiding again. Smash like, stuff so for more, buy the merch you want, support the channel and have a wonderful day, everybody.